Hey yo, my book lovers, my history buffs, what's good? How y'all doing? Today, I'm gonna take a quick, 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 quick little look at a book for all the Greekoids and history buffs. Please assemble. Because you must be tired of limiting your knowledge about the classical Greek period to a handful of movies and only learning something new about playing a new game or finding some, something new on your YouTube homepage. That's what I was having. And watching and wondering like which bit, bits are truthful, what is like made up. Well, the secret to that lies here within the original source material, Hellenica by Xenophon. Let me paint the picture, yeah? So Xenophon is the soldier philosopher who served in the Athenian army and as a um, mercenary. But he was not only tactfully minded, philosophically as well. An admirer of Socrates, he and Plato are actually the only one like, like main sources, like actual sources about the um, Socrates. Socraticoi Logos, Logoi, yeah, so like Socrates' ways of thinking, but anyhow, but that's what fascinates me, like how it's all interconnected in the ancient Greek period, but that aside, Hellenica takes us from the late event of the Peloponnesian War that concluded in the raising of Paris's walls, the events following the consolidation of power, the cracks showing in the Spartan hegemony, the rise of the Theban, yeah, of the Theban coalition. So that's actually interesting if you want to learn more about that. That's what this encompasses. So the book recounts like main events, army compositions, major battle, campaign movements, uh, dialogues, everything. Whatever, like any main event that took place between 411 and 362 BC, you can find that right here. Because it shows you like how badass Lysander, the Spartan king, was. The sheer volume of like naval vessels. Like it debunks a lot of uh, mainly Spartan uh, mis like uh, assumptions, misassumptions that we might have. Uh, because Xenophon obviously he he he, he received some real estate from the Spartans, so he, the book might be a little bit biased. But let me paint a picture here. In the year 394 BC, a clash was about to take place, now to us known as the Battle of Nemea. The ephors had called out the ban. The state called upon Aristodemus to lead the expedition heading into the Bimarine region, swelling up the Lacedaemonian ranks with men from Tegea and Mantinea. As the column dropped down upon the Gulf of Corinth, they advanced through the flat country, felling timber, burning the fair lands. Only two kilometers separated the Spartan and Boeotian led armies once camp was laid. Lacedaemonian heavy infantry amounted to 6,000, while the Eleans, Lesionians, Trojans, and several other policies contributed a total of 7,500 heavy infantry. A retinue of 600 Spartan cavalry, a body of 300 Cretan archers, another force of 400 slingers consisted of Marganians, Latrians, and Fidolians. The men of Fleos were absent due to their plea of keeping a holy truce. Front facing this force stood the Boeotian coalition. The Athenians matched the Lacedaemonian heavy infantry with 6,000 of their own, aided with an additional 7,000 Argives and about 5,000 Boeotians. That not sufficing, another 6,000 heavy infantry troops came down from Corinth and the rest of Ephoia. Cavalry was made up by 600 Athenians, 800 Boeotians, 150 from, from Chalcedon and Locrians, outnumbering the Lacedaemonian light infantry with Azolans, Archanians, and other Greeks. From the fields of Ares to the Agora we go. Here we experience the Athenian court system at play. You get a vivid idea of the six admirals and generals being prosecuted for refusing to rescue a shipwrecked crew after a battle. A naval engagement and it takes uh, it takes place in a public assembly then it goes into a more private room and we get to see actually how the tribes used to vote it is in a big uh, amphora where they put like two-faced rods so the an an anonymity of the jurors was guaranteed yet one could see who voted for who they also did a show of hands 
as well as how they went from kind of like a Rico charge. They charged all six admirals at first, and then through pleading and rhetoric, they changed it to individual sentences. So it's cool to have an idea how that was actually, how, how, how the Athenian democracy and court system took place. But as well, other random events such as crazy stuff like Syracusan POWs that escape a, a stone quarry near, near Athens. How they do that? The imminent Athenian defeat, like what stood just at their doorstep, how the people were, were living out of that. And it's spread just filled with historical, historical accounts about uh, the time period, which it, it baffles me actually. Like just the primary sources, it's something, it's a nice switch off to read. But not only that, it also shows some historical truths or it confirms something. So Gates of Fire by Stephen Pressfield, there are certain parts, the author himself mentions that he focused, he took inspiration from Xenophon, included from Xenophon, and it's cool, you see, we see traditions like the breaking of twigs, so a Spartan soldier would, write, would inscribe his name on a twig, then break it, and it will fit perfectly, one half would be put in an amphora, or in a pot, uh, and the other one around his neck, actually just a dog tag, so it's cool to see historical events, historical habits, so yeah, I can't say anything else about it. As well, it has a truly beautiful conversation between Phanavasus and Agisilaos, which I will not spoil. You have to read it yourself. It's actually kind of magnificent. It is a bit moving, to say the least. But let me end with one little moral lesson. Dealing death wholesale. Such calamities are not indeed without a moral. One ought not to punish anyone even one's own slave, in anger, since the master in his wrath may easily incur worse evil himself than he inflicts. So, to attack an enemy under the influence of passion rather than of judgment is an absolute error, for wrath is but a blind impulse devoid of foresight, whereas to, whereas to the penetrating eye of reason a blow parried may be better than a wound inflicted. Let me get... I'll leave y'all with that to think about. So yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed. The next book might be just like a mix-up of The Body Keeps the Score. Perhaps with The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem, Sigmund Freud. Maybe something else as well. But thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed it, stick around. Hi, Tumos.